Welcome back. Today we are going to be talking about Dyn Topo or Dynamic Topology versus Multi-Res Modifier. Let's go ahead and get into it and do New File General. And let's go ahead and save as. We'll just call this Dyn Topo and save it. And we're going to do something a little different today with this. We want to duplicate our Suzanne. So just do Shift D and then hit X to lock it to the X and just move another duplicate over to the side. And so what we're going to do today is show you the difference of when and where and why to use dynamic topology over multi-res or vice versa. So let's name the first Suzanne here. Let's name her multi-res. This is the most flexible way to sculpt. And then we also have dyne topo. And so that monkey will be dynamic topology. So we'll just go ahead and save. And let's go ahead and turn on our mat caps. And while we're here, let's go ahead and turn on the wireframe just to kind of see what's happening here. And so for the multi-res, let's add the multi-resolution modifier and crank it up to, you know, five, something like that. So notice we've got a smooth monkey here. And then we are going to take just our original Suzanne and just go straight into sculpt mode with control tab down and we can turn on dynamic topology. So this is anything you just, you know, you just want to sculpt on it really quick. Uh, you don't care about the original base model. You can just go straight into dynamic topology and it'll probably give you an error. And that's just saying that there is some UV data down here in the UV maps. So if you just delete that now, when you check it, uh, it won't give you that warning. And also when you check it, so go ahead and check this box, but watch what happens to this original design when you check it. So we'll go ahead and click and looky there, it triangulated everything, but kept the overall shape of this monkey here. Um, it's not as smooth as the multi-res because um, multi-res actually smoothed it out. But this one, if you click and drag now on Suzanne, look, it's actually adding triangles to the mesh there. And you can increase or decrease the kind of resolution of that with this little drop down here. And that's the detail size. And it actually works backwards. Uh, so if you want more detail, you lower it. So we could do like six. And then if we click and drag, notice now we're getting more triangles and getting a kind of a denser or more detailed sculpt. And then if we increased it to maybe like 24, we're going to really simplify the mesh. So it's very, very fun to sculpt like this. But what I want you to keep in mind is it's very destructive um, and sometimes doesn't work as well when you're trying to use texture brushes. So dynamic topology really is fun just for blocking out some sculpts. Like say if you just wanna play with some, some, some digital Play-Doh and kind of get an idea of or the shape of something. But when you actually go and build it, we want to use multi-res. That way everything stays very flexible at all times. And so I'm going to drop this back down to six and just do some little details here. Maybe turn off the wireframe just so you can kind of see. It looks really cool just playing with this type of sculpting. And just like we talked about in the snake hook episode, one thing that's different about dynamic topology is that it's just going to keep creating geometry. Like if we take the snake hook and then scale it up and just grab, we can just keep on going for as long as we want to go to. But if we were doing that on the multi-res, we would run out of geometry. So just little things to remember, uh, but let's go ahead and jump into the multi-res. So go ahead and save, and then let's switch back over to object mode and select the multi-res monkey. And now if we control tab and go into sculpting, we have our modifier that's giving us resolution as we need it. And what this is really useful for is when you get into doing textures. So I'm gonna go ahead and save, and then subdivide one more time and really get us a few million faces on this monkey here. And it may take some time, My, there goes mine. And let's turn on the stats so we can actually keep an eye on our face count. So we're at two million, that's pretty good. Still a little heavy, but now whenever we go to say a draw brush, we can create a new texture. So we'll just do right here, we'll just do a new texture. We'll call this texture just like we did in the previous episode. And then we can come down here to texture and add a texture. So we'll just say new texture. This is gonna be called texture photo. And then now that we've created it, we can alter it down here and make sure it's an image and we'll open an image. And then I'm just in my brushes folders that we downloaded in the last section and doing textures. 
and then turning on thumbnails. And now we can grab one of these cool textures. So I'm just gonna do this one here. It looks like little veins or coral or something. And we'll go ahead and open that. Go ahead and save just for habit. And then let's go back to our tools and look at our brush texture and we can change it to area plane. And for the stroke, let's change it to something fun like anchored. And you could also save this mesh right here just by clicking this little shield and now it will save it. And speaking of save, I'm gonna go ahead and save and let's click and drag on Suzanne here. Notice it's very, very intense with the the spikes here. So we need to drop the strength a little bit, maybe like 0.25, just really low and get some really nice details on this design here. So looky there already, you can hold control and kind of look at that, making like cracks inside of her skull there. And so just play around with some of those. You could even go into back into your texture and change into a different brush. If you wanted to try some different brushes, Notice this one's more of like a soft type of brush. So if we click and drag with that, nice little rings or buttons, very strange looking texture, but you know, very easy to impl implement onto our design because we have the multi-res. And if you want better details in this, then just increase your subdivision on your multi-res. And the really the ultimate and coolest thing is that, you know, notice we've messed up Suzanne's head here. We've added all this new detail. We can always go back into our objects or into our modifiers here and just turn that back off. And look, now we're right back to where we started. Our main mesh is not modified or altered or messed up at all. So we can always go back as a safety if we need to. And it keeps you very generative and modular. So we'll just turn that back on. And now we have lots of texture. So that is why I want you to use the multi-res is that one, it's just non-destructive, it's generative, it's open, it's flexible. And then you've got your dynamic topology, which is very destructive, very fun, and good for some cases. Uh, so just letting you know those two types of different uh, kind of ways you can do sculpting. So you, and I'm not saying that you can't use dynamic topology. By all means, please use dynamic topology when you feel you need to, or if you're just kind of playing around with some designs. But if you're doing a professional, uh, you know, j project or job, then I would stay close to the multi-res just so you always are flexible and can get nice details on your textures and then, you know, always undo it if you need to. Or, but yeah, so that's my advice when using these two different types of sculpting choices. And so, yeah, use your best judgment and, um, you know, keep it flexible. So let's go ahead and jump into the next lesson and keep on sculpting.